building zeros tve based images is it important can we do it can we do it in a easy way and can a developer create an application end result containerized image which is tve free let's try to find the answers to all of these in this video <laughs> According to the Coalition Cyber Threat Index 2024, they predict that the total published CVEs will increase by 25% in 2024, which is a very, very big number. Now, the thing here is the number of CVEs are increasing because our architectures have changed enormously. We started off with monoliths and we still are doing the monoliths, but we went towards the microservices architecture and the systems have evolved to a great extent where now we have containerized ecosystem, we have Kubernetes to deploy them. Kubernetes has its own set of ecosystem and components that run which can be targeted and tagged. And then you have a lot and lot and lot of dependencies that is used within the packages or the dependencies that you use to create the software to ship them. So with all of these, there is this critical need of creating those zero CV images because this removes everything. Like if a developer is able to ship a product which is zero CVE, if they are able to use a base image which is CVE free and then they are able to create it and the final image is also CVE free or minimal CVEs, then that's the best thing that can happen for the security teams. So let me tell you about the term which is CVE fatigue. So CVE fatigue is kind of a problem where you are having a CVE. So you detected a CVE and that CVE is in thousands and thousands of places inside your organization. And it becomes really difficult for the security teams to actually patch all of these within the given time frame. One of the very famous attacks is the known vulnerability in the Apache Structs framework. And since the patch was not applied within time, it led to the leak of sensitive information of approximately 147.9 million individuals. Now, some of the common proven strategies for eliminating the CVE fatigue, and then we obviously move towards building the zero CVE images, uh, are using minimal dependencies. So yes, you can use, you know, minimal dependencies, lightweight images like Scratch, DistroList, uh, use Docker Slim. I have talked about that. We'll put the link in the description if you want to know more, more about these. And you can also use modern day Kubernetes ecosystems like Talos Linux, which has only 12 binaries in it. Now, a few missing pieces over there is, like for example, there is Dependabot for GitHub. Now, GitHub has Dependabot to auto create the PRs or auto inform you about any vulnerabilities or any security issues, security flaws in your GitHub repositories for the language dependencies. But what about the OS dependencies? There is no declarative way and there is also no way to find it and also auto patch it GitHub bot for OS dependencies as well. And also to create those images in a declarative way, like define those OS packages when you are building the applications, getting those CVE free, which will also result in creating high quality S bombs. Now Wolfie by ChainGuard and also the ChainGuard images are a very good example. But even there, if you see the Apco and Vilanch project, it is not that dead simple to create those zero CV images. So today I'm very excited to introduce build safe to create zero CVE images and we'll do it right now. So I have a very simple project, which is a Golang file, uh, main.go, which has some functions, handle functions like slash ping, slash ping, add, delete, etc. And it is serving from the static directory, which has a simple index.html file. It has some dependencies that you can see in go.mod. And those are pretty much it. That's a simple Golang application. Now what we'll do is I have the BSF, which is the build safe CLI installed on this particular system. So the first step that we'll be doing is the BSF in it. Now this will initialize and also ask that if I want to create a base image, I'll say, yes, I want to create a base image here. I give it a name, ttl.ss, ttl is an anonymous directory and it says that it has initialized it successfully. So we have the BSF and build safe and all these stuff. And also we would need the vendor directory because we have the dependency. So we'll do go mod vendor and it creates the vendor directory over here as well. 
Now, this is pretty important when you are building the hermetic builds. So, hermetic builds, hermetic builds is basically if a build without run commands and if the network is disabled. When we move ahead, so we'll do the hermetic build. So, let's try to understand the bsf.hcl file. Uh, it has the packages. In the packages, you can define the development packages that you need for building your application and runtime for the creating the final image of your artifact. So, OCI packages is basically what we want to ship as the image. So, this will be the image name and you can define CMD entry point in, in VVADs, expose post and import configs as well. So, what we can now do is in BSF, there is a command to search for packages. So, for example, for this particular scenario, we need Golang to build the application. So, what we'll do is we'll use BSF search go.dev and we'll be able to find all the versions and we'll be able to see the licenses and we'll be able to see the CVE information for every particular version. So this particular version has three vulnerabilities in that. Now let's select development. I want to add this to the development environment and also allow minor version patch updates. Now let's see bsf.hcl file again and we'll be able to see that go 1221 has been added. Next, a developer can do BSF develop to start developing the application and create a development environment for themselves. And now we are inside the development environment. So we can do which go and you can see 1.22.1. Now let's exit. We can do BSF update and it will run the update. Update ran successfully and it will update the BSF.HCL file to a version which is 1.225 which is CVE free. Isn't that cool? Isn't that amazing? Because now imagine a bot which we already have a private beta. So if anybody wants to try that out, please DM me. So a GitHub bot that will be able to detect an OS package with vulnerabilities and will be able to give you a pull request by fixing it from checking it in the database for that particular package that is CVE free. And you can add bash because like distrolist doesn't have bash. So there are different things which you can add in your base images that you need. For example, you want to debug an image, you need bash, you need a shell. You can add a version of bash that is CVE free. So that's the power of BSF search and adding and seeing the CVE information and adding that to the file. So we are not done here yet. Now the thing that we'll do is we'll create an OCI artifact. Now, this is the critical step. So, BSF OCI packages, dev, the hyphen hyphen dev flag means we want to include the development dependencies. So, the artifact is generated and it is pushing to the registry. So, the image is created. Now, what we'll do is we'll do docker run minus it and we'll try to run this particular image with bash. Since we did hyphen hyphen de dev, so the dev packages, the development packages were also there and it had bash. We are now inside and uh, we can see go version and a developer can do any kind of development when they are in the development shell. Now we can also do gripe and give the image name. So gripe is basically a simple utility to check if there are any vulnerabilities in this particular image. So as you can see, there are no vulnerabilities found. So we are able to successfully create a zero CVE base image. So this is this completes our first target of having a zero CVE base image. Now the next step, now we usually what we do is we create a Docker file, we put a base image from that and we build the package and then we do a multi-stage build and then we copy that artifact into the final image. So what we'll now do is we'll first try to get a final image. For that, what we'll be do using is we'll be doing a BSF OCI packages, the same thing that we did, but this time what we'll do is we have removed the hyphen hyphen dev flag which was there. So what it will do is it will only take the runtime packages and not the development packages so that it is super minimal, super hardened uh, final image. So this particular image that we are building now will act as the multi-stage build step two. And uh, the next step is to create the Docker file. In that I have simple Docker file where I have the from ttl.ss base image dev1 as the build image. So this is the zero CVE base image. So the zero CVE base image that we built. And this has the development packages 
plus the runtime packages both. The work directory is SRC, copying the source code, creating a temp directory and running the go build. Now second thing is the final stage and here we will use the prod v1 which was the final base image which only has the runtime packages. Work directory is app, we are copying from build two things. One is obviously the build and second is the index.html file which we have to serve. Exposing the port 8080 and the entry point app slash server. Now, interestingly, what we'll be doing is we'll be building this in a hermetic uh, build fashion where we'll be using network none and we'll be using the directly git URL. So this is the command that we'll be using docker build network none push platform is Linux AMD and we are giving the direct repository URL instead of dot that we usually give for docker file. So it will be able to find the declarative docker file which is accessible readable to everyone inside the git repository and tagging that particular image. So the build is complete. Now let's try to run it. So docker run hyphen id and giving the platform giving the port 8080 which is for the application and it has started the server. Let's go back and test it out. And yes, our application is up and running, which is fantastic. Now, one last thing obviously that we have to do is we have to check whether the image that we have produced is CVE free or not. And for that, we'll use our favorite tool, which is Gripe. In this particular case, Gripe, the image name. And you can see no vulnerabilities found. How cool is that? So we started off with creating zero CVE based image and you can add as many packages as you want. I added go package, I updated that and we can add bash, we can add whatever we want in our final image as well, in the base image as well. We can create development environment shells and we create the hermetic build. And we can also check if the build is hermetic or not by using crane. So first is crane manifest. Let's try to get the manifest for that particular image. So we get this particular digest. Now we'll use this digest again and do a crane manifest and give at the rate this, this digest. Now we again get uh, a couple of layers. We'll have to use this particular layer and get the blob for that using crane and output that as JQ. And here you can see that material is true but because we gave the GitHub URL and also the hermetic is true. So this is how we can check the build is hermetic or not. So in this particular video, we discussed like what is CVE fatigue, why it is important, why zero CVE game is important and all that stuff. Uh, and we used build safe. We also discussed like the current ecosystem. Yes, shape card images and all they are pretty good, pretty fancy. They have done a lot of work in the recent times in helping uh, us reach a stage where we are in. But build safe as a tool uh, with using Nix as a package manager helps you do it in a very easy manner where you can use BSF HCL file, add any packages that you need search any package that you need and get the CV information for that, add that to the development or the runtime folders uh, or the directory structure and you can do the OCI exports. So you will be able to create zero CV base image, zero CV final image and then able to produce hermetic build and eventually go towards reproducibility as well. And this is how the zero CV base image is no longer a myth. It is something which is possible in an easy way and helps the security team to eliminate the CVE fatigue and you will be able to completely shift the security left. So we have talked a lot in the past about shifting the security left which is the basic DevSecOps principle but this is what actually helps you do it. There were limited set of tools now with BuildSafe you will be able to do it. We have an exclusive private beta access if you want to test out the GitHub bot that will automatically raise the pull request just like the Dependa bot for your OS packages if there are any vulnerabilities found. So if you are interested, then do join our Discord and DM us and we would be happy to show you that and get your feedback on it. Uh, so do try build safe out and make your software supply chain easy. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.